For the longest time, I used Diderio strings, or Diaderio, as some people say, but I switched to Ernie Bob because the strings are individually wrapped and it made it easier to restring. So as you can see with Martin, that is the same deal. So we got 52, A string is 42, D string is 32, the G string is 23, the B string is 15, and the high E is 11. So when you're stretching the strings, why are we stretching the strings? Well, we're stretching the strings because these things are fairly rigid and there's a little bit of slack around the post here. So when you tune it up, not all that slack goes away. And when you kind of pull on the string and stretch it, you're tightening the string around the post. In terms of how much additional stretch there is in the string, I'm not going to speak to that. I don't know. But I do know there's slack around here that when you tighten it up, will uh, help the string stay in tune. This is a long one, isn't it? Right? So, okay. The action is a little bit lower. I lowered it a little bit. I didn't lower it a lot. I probably could take some, some more off. I could probably go with a lower action than this, but quite frankly, this action is low enough for me. Let's check the neck relief. It feels about right. So if I capo the first fret, and then I hold down the last fret, then at the eighth fret, I'm looking for 10 thousandth, 10 thousandths relief. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's this guy right here. Not letting you out of my sight. This is sort of awkward, isn't it? In reality, right now, the neck is perhaps too straight. I can't really get this 10 thousandths feeler gauge in here without, uh, without lowering it. I mean, without it raising the string. There's almost no relief right now. I actually have to give this neck some relief. So that means Lefty Lucy, I want to loosen the truss rod a little bit. So turn it to the left a little bit. Get in there. There we go. Okay, let's try that. Yeah, that's about 10. So let me, uh, let me take all this down and go back to my regular setup and then I'm gonna record uh, what it sounds like mic'd up and then what the direct sounds like so you can get an idea. So there you go. This is the Yamaha APX600. Is that what it's called? Yeah.
APX600 just rolls right off the tongue, doesn't it? Yamaha APX600, $330 thin line acoustic electric with a pretty darn good preamp built into it, relatively low action, slightly shorter scale, easy to play. What's not to like? Well, the fretwork's not the greatest. The action out of the box isn't the greatest. As an acoustic guitar, it's certainly not amazing sounding, but if you wanna get up on stage and you want to play acoustic guitar numbers and you're used to playing electric and you don't have a lot of money, let's say you got like th under 400 bucks to spend, you got this and there's an Ibanez and one other. There's not a lot of options in this price range, but the good news is this is a really darn good option. So if you bought this thing for gigging, like out in pubs and stuff, or, you know, uh, VFW, whatever, bars, I think it's awesome for the money. I think it's awesome for the money. I'm very pleased with this guy. After I've done a bunch of gigs with it, then, you know, I'll give you another opinion. But right now, super happy with this purchase. You should be too if you bought it. There's the validation you wanted. And I will see you again next Friday at five.